in the previous video we had seen the ideal Brayton cycle and we had also looked at how the equations are written for each of the subcomponents. In this video we're going to look at the same Brayton cycle but we're going to see uh, how the irreversibilities and losses have an effect on the Brayton cycle on the subcomponents and because of that how the TS diagram changes and how the equations would change as well. For the purpose of this discussion, we're going to only look at the internal irreversibilities that take place within the compressor and the turbine. Irreversibilities also take place within the heat exchangers, but those are because of the frictional pressure drops and they're less significant sources of irreversibilities. So we are going to ignore those in our discussion. Irreversibilities also take place um, with these subcomponents interacting with the external power plant components, for example, and those would represent losses as well, but we are not going to uh, look at those losses as well, so they are going to be ignored as well. When we talk about the effect of irreversibilities within the turbine and the compressor, what happens is that the work that is developed across the turbine decreases and the work input that is required by the compressor increases and that means that there go there's going to be a decrease in the net work of the power plant. Um, after a lot of developments now the efficiencies are up to 80 to 90 percent for the turbines and compressors in gas turbine power plants and if we were to look at this TS diagram when irreversibilities start taking effect that means that the entropy starts increasing for that process because we're only going to consider the irreversibilities for processes 1 to 2 and 3 to 4. So let's just look at uh, the process across the turbine first, which is 3 to 4. For the irreversibilities um, to be included in our analysis, the point 4 is going to move outwards uh, because the entropy has to be increased. Right now, this is an isentropic process. And when there's going to be... Um, irreversibility is taking place, this process is going to basically come down to this point which we call 4 dash. So this is going to be our actual process, 3 to 4 dash. And across the compressor, instead of a vertical line 1 to 2, this line is going to move inwards. And it's going to be, let's say, somewhere here and this is going to be 2 dash, 1 to 2 dash. So now if we say, take a look at this uh, process that happens across the turbine, we could actually take a ratio of the actual process to the ideal process. So work done across the actual cycle, which would be this. I could divide this by work done across the ideal process. And this ratio is known as the isentropic efficiency of the turbine or the isentropic turbine efficiency. And we could equate these in terms of the enthalpies, which would be H3 minus H4 dash for the actual process divided by H3 minus H4 for the ideal process. And then if I was looking at the uh, cold air standard analysis, I could equate this equal to Cp delta T and then Cp would cancel out in the numerator and the denominator. So we would be left with uh, T3 minus T4 dash divided by T3 minus T4. Just like this, we could find out the isentropic compressor efficiency, which would be the ratio of the ideal process taking place divided by the actual process taking place across the compressor. And again, for the cold air standard analysis, this would be equated to uh, Cp delta T, Cp would cancel out in the numerator and the denominator, and D would be left with 
t2 minus t1 divided by t2 dash minus t1. And that is your axial Brayton cycle, or it's also called Brayton cycle with irreversibilities.